Um, you're speaking with Oscar from uh, Select. I, I'm the lead vocalist and guitarist. Um, so, yeah. so tell us, man, what's going on in the world of Select? Um, at the moment, we are uh, like preparing for the release of the new album Goddess, which is out on the 18th of March worldwide. And also, um, we're kind of mentally preparing for a tour of Europe coming up with our dear Copenhagen friends in Demon Head. That's uh, in the, from the end of March and uh, like two and a half week forward through most of Europe. And also, uh, yeah, looking a bit on some new material already. We're always writing, so yeah. Very cool, man. Now, for yeah. people out there uh, listening, uh, can you give us like a brief history of the band? Tell us how long have you been doing this, and uh, how exactly did you get started? Sure. Um, I started the project as a solo or one-man thing around 10 years ago. And the reason why I was solo was because I didn't really know anyone that I thought uh, I could involve in the project. But then um, um, through, how shall you say, uh, unforeseen circumstances, the other guys kind of like uh, walked into my life and then Slick became a live band. And then all of a sudden it became a band band, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Like um, we started writing together and so on. And that was around... 2014 ish i would say and since then we've been a, a band um which i'm i'm very more happy with um i always saw this project as ideally being a band rather than just a a, a solo thing because at one point i started to get some musical ideas that due to my how should you say personal um technical um Um, how should you say, um, yeah, um, inhibitions or what you say, like like stuff I couldn't do. I all of a, all of a sudden, for example, had a great uh, lead guitarist, so I could tell him, yeah, you play a solo here, you know, instead of me <laughs> trying to uh, play my not so good lead work on it. So yeah, <laughs> it's been great since fourteen. Right on, man. Uh, this, now, uh, as far as uh, you guys just signed with Century Media Records, can you tell us about that? How, how has that experience been so far? Uh, so far, I think it's been good. They're a super um, professional and a serious label. And um, they're very, like, um, communicative, you know. Um, we can reach out to them with questions or ideas, and then they'll come back to us pretty fast. So that's very nice. Um, we signed with them, when was that? In August last year. But we, it, it wasn't like we didn't break the news or anything until December last year, I think it was. But um, yeah, so far so good, I would say. Um, we've already had <laughs> way more work than we've ever had, but we've also learned a lot already. So that's only good. And we're very um, excited and curious to see how... Uh, How will be when the when the record comes out how the response will be yeah man for sure now yeah. you've got this tour coming up with demon head can you tell us about that yeah sure um demon head are some of our very close friends here from copenhagen we've known them for many many years now um through music of course but um not only playing together but also like going to concerts and festivals and stuff like that um Copenhagen is not not a very big city, so you kind of everyone knows everyone, um, and yeah, we we talked about going out on the road together for for many many years. We've played many shows together, but never really a tour. So finally, it's gonna happen, and we're gonna go, as I said a bit earlier, through uh, most of Europe, lots of Germany, a bit of uh, Belgium, Netherlands, France, and and so on and so forth about i think it's 17 or 18 shows so that will be great and it, it will also be uh, i'm i'm really starting to look forward to go out on the road again i must say it's been way too long yeah i was gonna ask uh, uh how, how has the pandemic been affecting you guys have you been pretty isolated because of that and yeah like in the beginning um denmark like closed down in march 2020 i think it was 
And in the beginning, we weren't like even allowed to uh, rehearse together, you know. So it was a bit like, what the, what's gonna, what's gonna happen now, you know? And um, and I think we had planned a lot of shows, and we were beginning to plan tours and stuff. Then all of a sudden, everything was closed down. But once we got used to the new um, situation and way of life, we just started writing material and focusing on that. So, um, so I guess, I mean, we were naturally forced to be isolated. Everyone was, at least here, in a way. Um, but I think we also chose to like focus on what we could do in the situation, rather than all the things we were missing out on, and just you know being patient and wait until everything opened up again and we could come out and play again. Hell yeah. Now, uh, uh, the recording process for this record, uh, can you tell us about that? I, I'd say that you, uh, I was looking at the press release, says that you guys uh, recorded at um, the same studio as uh, In Solitude. Yeah, that's right. It's a studio in Stockholm in Sweden called Studio Cobra. And it's uh, run by a guy called uh, Martin Ehren Krona, uh, and another guy whose no name I, I don't know. Um, and yeah, how was the recording process? It was 10 days of work um, from morning till late evening. Um, just doing basic tracking first to begin with. We usually do um, all the tracking live all the four of us together do many takes and then choose the best ones and then maybe brush up a few mistakes here and there and then um once that is done it's like you know extra guitars guitar leads vocals extra things you know so yeah we was just uh, being far away from home and just working the, there wasn't much else to do i mean uh, Sweden has a very strict alcohol uh, policy, so there <laughs> there wasn't much um, much room to uh, you know being a bit rowdy or crazy. But maybe that's <laughs> for the better, you know. I don't think uh, we always work so well if we're hungover or something. <laughs> Sometimes we do, but but not always. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd rather not take that risk. Yeah, I understand. So, so you guys were pretty yeah. focused on this. Well, well, the sound quality is really, really good from everything that I've heard so far, man. It sounds really uh, has yeah. a very live, organic sound. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. I mean, as I told you before, we usually do like all the basic tracking, um, all the four of us together in a room. You know, um, as far as I understand, many bands do it like first the drums to like a you know, um, what's the name, a Q guitar or something like that. And then the bass and then the guitars and stuff like that. But uh, for some reason, we prefer to do it like um, all the four of us together in a room to get like uh, the right energy. Mm -hmm. And and we also like like organic sounds, you know, it, it, it has to be uh, dynamic and it has to breathe, you know. I mean, um, my impression of a lot of uh, metal these days, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you turn on your air condition or something, you know, and it's just like <laughs> the same, you know, dynamic yeah, yeah. for 40 minutes or something, you know, <laughs> um, which of course, sure, sometimes you want something that's just brutal and pummeling uh, in your face, you know, but um, but we don't write this kind of music. So, um, so I think this kind of production suits our songs the best for sure. And I'm very happy you uh, you like what you've heard so far. Um, I, I've read a bit of comments online. May I know I shouldn't do that, but I, I'm just so curious. Yeah. And many people really despise it. You know, they really dislike it. Really? Yeah, they <laughs> write something like that. The, whoever whoever mixed and mastered this should be fired and all this kind of stuff. What the fuck? And I don't know. I don't know why. If it's because people's ears are used to something completely different or because they're listening on their phone or whatever you know but yeah when i listen to it on good speakers or good headphones it sounds really good so i don't know 
Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't tried to listen to it on a cell phone, so I can't comment on that. <laughs> but from from what I've heard out of my stereo system, which is, yeah. I think that's how you should listen to music anyway. It sounds yeah, great, man. Preferably, preferably for sure. You know, <laughs> I mean, sometimes you're out and about, and maybe you want to show something to your friends, and then you just do it on your phone. But yeah, at at home, you know, and you, if you really want to get into it, and like listen to whatever work the the musicians or the artists or whatever put into it then then yes of course you should uh, you, you should listen on a, on a good stereo uh, yeah now mm. uh, uh, speaking of the sounds for for all the gearheads out there that are listening uh, can you okay, could, yeah. could you give us a rundown of some of the equipment that you use to get these sounds uh, let me think uh, I know of course mostly about myself um, we didn't bring any amplifiers up to Stockholm we didn't have space in the car, but um, uh, Anas, the other guitarist, he's a, he's really big on Vox AC30s. He normally plays plays through one of those, and luckily there was one in the studio, so he played through that one. Um, and I think he only for for like gain and stuff, he only uses like a Boss Overdrive, the yellow one, and then he plays a Gibson uh, Black Custom uh, Explorer. Um, and I normally use a Marshall head. I think it's the JCM 2000 or something. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't had any luck with finding a 900 yet. I'll, but I'm still out on the lookout. But I think in the studio there was a JCM 800. And I don't know which model it was exactly and from when, but that's what I went through. And I have a distortion pedal and I think I played most of the basic tracking on my... Uh, I have a cherry red uh, flying V from the seventies, which I really love. And then I did some overdubs on a on another guitar, leads and stuff. Very and cool. for the bass, I don't know, and the drums, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah. cool, man. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, about the live shows coming up uh, for anybody out there who's never seen you guys live before, what what can you tell them to expect? Um, they can expect a band that is really in the moment when we are on stage and um, if we're having a bad day on stage we're really trying not to let it show but unfortunately sometimes it does but when it really works it really does work you know we're, we're, we're really like of course we rehearse our set and then this song comes and you know maybe here I can say something to the audience or something like that but we leave a lot up to uh, the moment and to chance or whatever you say. Um, so yeah, and we, no matter what, give uh, all we've got inside of us. Yeah, that's what people can expect. Hell yeah. And great songs, of course. Lots of energy. Hell yeah. Uh, I also got to ask you about the album art, man. This, this album cover yeah. is beautiful. Uh, can you tell us about it? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think it's, extremely beautiful too. It's made by a guy called uh, David Glumba. I think he's from uh, Slovakia here in Europe. And um, he's done stuff for bands like Cold of Fire and Malut Karpatan, I think they're pronounced um, before. And um, we were like kind of brainstorming, hmm, who should it be this time around, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, one of us suggested maybe yeah, let's reach out to him. And um, then we sent him whatever, uh, like, rehearsal space, demos of the material we had and the lyrics and stuff. Then we told him we want a painting for the cover and some illustrations for, like, a, a booklet, you know, that could go along with the lyrics and stuff. And then, yeah, we just gave him more or less uh, three reigns, if that's what you say. And, yeah, we're very pleased. I think it's probably the best... Um, album album cover we've had so far without a doubt uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah i bet that's gonna look really nice on vinyl for sure yeah definitely and especially one of one of the vinyl versions actually the band exclusive one is gonna be gold vinyl so i i think those two will go super well together oh uh, yeah yeah very cool man definitely. all right well uh i'm about out of questions for you is there anything else you want to let the people know yeah, well, people out there should remember to um, check out uh, the single we've got out already called Fealty Thunderweb. You can find it on your uh, 
uh, streaming services and there's a video on the Century Media YouTube channel. And we've got a next single coming up uh, in a few weeks time. And then the album drops on the 18th of March. And uh, anyone interested out there should, of course, give it a listen, buy a copy. And if you can catch us on the road in uh, April, please come along and say hi. Hell yeah. All right, yeah. man. Well, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us. And uh, uh, before I let you go, can I get you to make us a station tag real quick? Yeah, of course. How should it go? Say uh, something like, this is Slet, and you are listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Okay. Hello, this is Oscar from Slet, and you are listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Perfect, man. That's good. Awesome. Uh, thanks a lot, awesome. man. Awesome. awesome. Thanks a lot. You thanks welcome. for your time. Thank you, man. Cheers. Yeah. Take care out there. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.